Well, my name is Tarita Slater, and I'm HIV positive. I was born in North Carolina. Um, my family moved to Ohio. Um, and then I moved to Washington State when I was 16. And I've been here ever since. I thought my mother was taking me to Washington, D.C. <laughs> so I told all my friends, I'm going to D.C., y'all. Well, I wind up in Washington State. I didn't know there was two at the time. And I'm now 63, I mean 62. They told me in 1990, I think it was 94, that I was positive. Um, and the boyfriend that I had was in California. And he came back, and I had just found out I was positive. And he came back to me, oh, I love you, baby. And I said, I don't want to talk to you. I really need you to just go away. And he was like, what's wrong with you? I said, if you get out that car, I'm not going to be responsible. Please don't get out your car, please, because I really don't want to hurt you. And he kept saying, why are you going to hurt me? And I said, I'm HIV positive. And guess where I got it from? My name is Vicki Marie Nicola. I'm a woman of color living with HIV. I grew up in Seattle, Washington. Um, went to California, lived there for a couple years. Came back to Seattle. Found out that the cost of living was really high there, so decided to move to Tacoma and been here since 1982. And I've, I've been through a lot. Um, I've been through the drug life. I've been homeless. Um, in fact, actually, when I was diagnosed at the age of 50, um, that's the first time I became clean and sober. Um, I was with a boyfriend, a so-called boyfriend. Um, it eventually became sexual. Um, after the fact, he then came and told me, oh, by the way, I said, yeah. He says, I've got it. I said, got what? He says, I got it. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> you know, duh. And he says, um, I got AIDS. I said, AIDS? He said, yeah. I'm supposed to be medicated, but I don't take any medication. I said, well, why didn't you tell me before? He said, I already thought you had it. I said, why would you think I already had it? Because I live in my car? He said, no, everybody's got it. My name is Teresia Otieno. So when we talk about the stories of women, we have faced so many issues as women living with HIV. We have faced all those challenges and barriers that women always face in the community, but in particular those who are living with HIV. But yet, women living with HIV are powerful, they are resilient, they have so much to contribute. Having HIV has actually been a blessing to me um, because I know and feel that I wouldn't have met the people that I have met in my life since I've been diagnosed. They've become very important in my life, and they're real, true friends. Um, I'm living in an assisted living home, and those people are so great to me. It's just, I, I was homeless, and they stepped in and gave me a place to live. And I don't know where I would be. I think I would be dead by now if I had to live on the street. Being handicapped and homeless, that don't work together. And I really think I would not be around to see this day if someone hadn't stepped in and said, I've got your back. And that's what I want to do for other people. Let them know there's somebody that can hold your hand. They can walk down that aisle with you. You don't have to go by, by yourself. Living with HIV has really taught us to be better people in the community. It has taught us to be able to listen to others from the heart. And it has taught us to be able to look out into the community and see who needs extra support.
that is the story that we want to talk to about women living with HIV. You can live with HIV. This is not a death threat any longer. You have to love yourself though in order to do what you need to do. How you need to show other people where they can go. So the impact of these stories should be able to reach other women who are not part of this movement, but as well be able to bring changes that we want to see in our health system, um, in, in different policies, and even in laws that discriminate people living with HIV. You know, I'm not scared to say I'm, 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 I'm affected by HIV, I'm HIV positive. I'm not scared of that. You know, if, if you don't like me because of that, that's your personal opinion, but I know better because I know others are going through the same thing I am. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was taught as a little girl, a lot of people always said, you're not going to amount to anything. You just going to scare everybody away because you're too tall. And I was like, okay. But in being too tall and, and, and the person that I am, looking at HIV in the face and saying, I am somebody, I will be somebody, and you're not going to stop me. That's just me saying to HIV, I will not be stopped. That's pretty much it. That's my story. Walking in the sunshine, gathering my thoughts. There was something I forgot. Those things that were important don't seem so anymore. As I get a little older, priorities change.